What's up everyone? Today we're going to take a look at another Masters of the Universe Classics figure. We've got what could have been the He-Man design back in the 80s when the line started. We're taking a look at the Vicor figure from Mattel. Alright, so here's our figure and you know, it's a, it's a Motu Classics figure. I'm not going to do uh, packaging for this guy. So you can check out the He-Man or the Skeletor reviews if you want to take a look at that. Um, real quick, a bit of a history lesson on this guy. So Vicor is not an actual Motu character. He didn't exist in the cartoon. He didn't exist in the original line. What he is, is a representation in the Classics line of what He-Man could have potentially been originally back in the 80s. Um, so I'm going to pop up a picture of the guy on the screen here. You can take a look at him. You can see that... He's very Conan-esque in his original design, and that comes through in this Classics figure. So, um, you know, this was just one of the original uh, pitches for the character. There's also a Skeletor um, uh, kind of character sketch that we'll look at his figure uh, down the road as well. Um, but let's take a look at this character and see what he has to offer. He's, he's as you can see, he's a pretty standard-looking figure. Um, he's basically... He's basically He-Man because what he what he is now in the in the classics continuity, he's considered like the He-Man of the North, um, and he is the He-Man that comes after King Grayskull, I believe, uh, and he guards the Sword of He. He doesn't actually have it. Um, he's just kind of the guardian, the steward of of the He-Man powers until a, a worthy successor comes along. So uh, let's take a look at the articulation, and it, it's pretty standard. There's nothing special here. Uh, head goes, can go all the way around, or at least has the capability to do so, but you're going to see a lot of problems with that because of the long hair and then the, the necklace and the cape getting in the way. Uh, he does have a hinge, and he can look up and down, but just a little bit. Uh, arms go all the way out. They can rotate fully. There's that's pretty standard. He's got a bicep swivel, single jointed elbow, and then he's got wrist rotation. We do have an ab crunch. He goes down pretty decently. He's not going to go back because of this cape though. And then we've of course got uh, waist rotation and we've got legs that go out about yay far and they'll go forward just fine. They go, they're the standard kind of leg joint, but the loincloth is going to get in the way. And then back, back is not as hindered as forward. Um, we've got a swivel at the thigh joint and then we've got a single jointed knee we have got shin rotation or a boot cut and then we've got ankle rocker mine's mine are kind of uh they've kind of seized a bit over time but they can he does have if i push hard enough you can see the the foot goes forward and backwards pretty good um now as far as sculpt goes he is essentially the standard he-man buck with a few little bits and bobs added on so obviously you can see he's got the Viking style helmet, which is sculpted. Uh, it does not come off, it's not removable. And then he's got the long black hair. We've got the kind of shackles that are on his wrist and these have real metal chains on them. We've got the loincloth on the front and the back here and it's tattered on both. And then we've got the holster for his sword on the back loincloth. We have got kind of a belt sculpted on there. And then we've got the armbands on the, on the right arm sculpted on. And then the big, difference here, I guess, is this hard plastic furry cape. And it is removable. Pop the head off, it'll come off. Uh, it's attached to this bone necklace, and it's got, you can see, it's got kind of like a skull and some other bones in there, and it looks pretty good. Um, the boots are the same kind of He-Man style boots, but they don't have the pin showing on this figure any longer at this point in the in the line. Um, so overall, sculpt looks pretty good. Face is obviously a little different. It's not the same as He-Man. It's kind of a, just kind of generic man warrior type face and then as far as paint goes we've got you know a wash in the cape here the boots have the black markings on them there is gold and white accents which is pretty clean on this belt and then the black loincloth we've got the silver gauntlets or the shackles and then we've got the brown armband which has little gold accents on it the helmet is probably the most detailed piece the bone accents have kind of a dirty weathered look to them We've got the brown and gold, kind of bronzish almost, uh, accent on the crest of the helmet. And then the top of the helmet is a two-tone silver and another kind of bronzish type color. And we've also got the bone colors and then these blue accents on the necklace. So overall, he looks pretty solid. I don't, I don't, have, any, I don't have any issues with mine either, except for the joints are kind of tight on, on this guy. And I guess that's better than them being loose, but some, a little bit of them are kind of hard to position, especially this left foot. I don't, I don't know. I don't recall if it's been like that for a long time or not, but it, uh, it's, it's just hard to move now. So, 
that's just something to take note of, but it's not really an issue. All right, now as far as accessories goes, he's got three, and one of them is, is my only real gripe about this figure. Um, we'll take a look at his sword first. So this is kind of the original design for the sword. You know, imagine if this was the power sword, it's not nearly as cool as He-Man's sword, so I'm glad that, I'm glad this didn't become He-Man. Uh, it's just a silver sword with some bronze accents on it and, and gold on the hilt there. And he can slide it in back here on his holster, and it just stays in place just fine. Uh, we've got a battle axe. It's got a little bit of a rusty uh, color to it on the blade itself, some bronze and green accents, and then bronze uh, at the at the bottom there on the tip. And he's able to hold that pretty well. Uh, I sometimes have a problem getting this in his hand. The grip on his hand is pretty tight, so once you get it in there, it is not going to come out, which, which is fine. I'd rather it be too tight than too loose in that regard. Now the third is his shield. And the shield itself is fine. It's got the green accents with kind of the patinaed silver uh, rust type color on it. What my issue is with it is that it doesn't really fit on his wrist anywhere. Uh, and I've never been able to get it to to sit correctly. Like it just sort of hangs on there. It's not, it, see, it's not exactly falling off right now, but, you know, I just don't have to, I don't have to do anything and it's going to fall off. It has no real grip to it. And there's no place that it really sits better than another that I find. I try to get it over the shackle sometimes, and it seems to clip on, but then eventually if I just kind of look at him wrong, it's going to pop off. So I try to position it above the shackle, and it stays there fine as long as I'm not goofing around with him. So, um, you know, it's just a little nitpicky thing. I would have preferred it to be just a little bit tighter, and, you know, maybe I should take five seconds and heat it up and try to form it on his, on his wrist. But, uh, you know... There's plenty of shields in the Motu line that they got correct. I don't I don't understand why this one's any different. So the weapons are alright. They're they're nothing mind blowing. I don't I don't particularly care for the designs. They're they're very basic, uh, but you know, they're pretty decent. I do like the fact that he can have all of them on his his person at the at the same time, which is something I really like with, with any figure. So let's uh let's wrap this guy up, I guess. Overall, there's not a really a whole lot to be upset about with this figure. Sculpt is pretty solid, accessories are solid, paint's solid. And, you know, his, his articulation is what you would expect from a Motu Classics figure. Uh, the only thing I don't really like about him is that shield and the kind of grippy issue with the clasp on it. Otherwise, it's, it's, a, it's a manageable problem. Uh, I do love the fact that this uh, concept art sketch for, this, for, for what eventually became He-Man actually made it into a figure. I think it was really cool of Mattel to actually do this. Uh, he's a cool figure. It really shows that there was a lot of, you know, sword and sorcery. Conan type stuff that went into uh, Motu at its at its kind of birth. So I think it's really cool that they were able to do this, and I like the character. I like how they they kind of shoved him into the Motu continuity that they made with this line. And overall, I, I'm pretty pleased with them. So I can't can't say anything really negative about him. There's nothing specifically wrong with this figure. It's it's a solid representation of the design, and another another pretty good. Uh, entry into the quote-unquote he-men of uh, Motu Classics. So that's going to do it for this one, everyone. As always, uh, stay tuned for more reviews. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.